Hey everyone, I finally did it. I put my photo in the thumbnail like a real coding YouTuber does. I guess you can't teach people to code without uh, also posing like this and like this and maybe this one over and over and over. Uh, so I'm doing it too, I guess. Let's see how it goes. Today we're talking about TypeScript and Express. Uh, this is not going to teach you TypeScript. It's not going to teach you Express. It's just going to show you how to integrate the two. So if you need to know either of them, I have some videos on both topics. Uh, I also have a TypeScript course. You can find the link in the description. But again, this is about integrating the two and getting set up so that you can use TypeScript with Express. So here we go. Okay, so I have an empty directory, express, ts, call it whatever you want. And there's a couple of things we have to start off with. The first would be an npm init. Let's just do dash y. I can't see anything. Oh, there we go. Uh, and now after that, um, I might as well make my index.js to start. I'm going to start with JavaScript, get a server running, and then work on incorporating TypeScript. Okay. So I have that, and I've opened the folder in uh, VS Code. We've got my package.json and my index.js. So the next thing we'll do is install Express. So npm install Express, and then uh, we'll set up a very, sim very simple Express app in here. So uh, I'm going to require Express. I'm talking one route that just sends text back. So we'll do app, const app equals express. I can't spell const. And then an app.get slash. And then we'll have our request response callback. So if you don't know express at all, this is not going to be much use to you. Um, hopefully you're, you've seen the basics of express on its own. We'll do res.send hello from express plus ts. Not ts yet <laughs> all right and then app.listen um, let's just make a port variable const port equals 8000 3000 whatever you want or use dot env um, but just to keep it simple i'll just set it to be 8000 so we'll listen on that port and then uh, let's have our callback that console.logs now listening on port and then interpolate with our string template literal the actual port. Okay, so let's try running that node index.js. It says now listening on port 8000. Let's go to localhost 8000. And here we are, everything's working. We've got our very basic express app. I hesitate to even call that an app. So now let's go about incorporating TypeScript. There's a couple of things we have to do. The first thing, of course, is install TypeScript. Make sure we write TypeScript in a TypeScript file. And then we need to turn those TypeScript files into JavaScript, and then take those JavaScript files and serve them. But in addition, I want to have some watch mode going on so that my TypeScript is automatically compiled or transpiled to JavaScript, and I want my uh, Express app to automatically be reserved using NodeMon. So I'm going to have to write some basic NPM scripts. But to start, I'm going to install TypeScript. And I'm also going to install the types for Express because if I just install TypeScript and I come over here, I rename this as a .ts file. Now in my TypeScript file, everything at the moment is of any type. Well, not port. <laughs> that one's obvious. It's a literal type. But app is any. Uh, I'm not getting any benefits from TypeScript, right? I could do a res. Um, I don't know, mend res dot pickle dickle, no problem. TypeScript's not catching those problems, and that's the whole point. Right? We want TypeScript here. So I need to install the type declarations for TypeScript. Fortunately, it's super easy. We have our definitely typed uh, type declarations for Node and Express. So it's at types slash Express and at types slash Node. Okay, so we wait for those type declarations to install, and what happens now? Does TypeScript know what's going on here? Not quite, because in TypeScript land, we don't use require, right? We don't use this form of imports. Uh, we use the actual import keyword. So we're going to import express from express, just like that. And if we look at express here, now we're getting some type stuff going on.
But more than just the overall express, what I'm actually going to import are a couple of named things. Express with a capital E, request, and response, all capitalized. So these are three types that we use all the time in express. And technically, I don't actually need to import any of this stuff right here, none of these named imports, but I'm gonna annotate my routes with the correct types just to show you uh, what's going on here. But if I just look at app right now, it already has a type, uh, an inferred type of express. So if I look at app, right, in TypeScript, I have things like .get or .post or .listen, right? I don't have .chicken and I get an error. So the types are already automatically incorporated or inferred. Uh, and for the most part, we usually don't have to do a lot of type annotations on the express side of things. Even with my callbacks here, TypeScript can figure out that request is of type request. Response, res, is of type express response. But if I want to be explicit, I would annotate it like this. Request is of type request, response is of type response, and app is of type express. But I'm not really changing anything here. TypeScript already figured that out. Just by installing those type declarations, uh, TypeScript figures out what we're working with in the world of Express. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is try and start the server, which is not going to work because it's TypeScript now. So if I tried to run the JS file, well, it doesn't exist. If I try and run the TypeScript file, we're gonna get an error because of course we can't execute this as uh, a node script. So I need to transpile this code into JavaScript. And what I'm going to do is make a uh, TSC config or a TypeScript config file. So I'll do npx tsc dash dash init to create my new TypeScript config file right here. And there's just one setting I'm going to change, which is the out dir or art out directory. I'll change that to something like dist. Whatever I name, whatever I call this folder, I just need to remember. Because now when I run the TSC command, which I'm going to do or I'll do npx tsc just in case you don't have it installed globally. I should have a new dist folder and in this dist folder, I have an index.js. So this is the transpiled TypeScript into JavaScript node express app. And now I can run that with node dist slash index.js. And we should go back to seeing what we already had. But the main difference, of course, is that this was originally TypeScript transpiled into JavaScript. So we have the basic workflow. Now I wanna write some scripts to sort of automate this so I don't have to run this myself. I wanna do an npm run start or run build or run dev and have some fancy stuff, uh, especially with the, the dev server uh, with Nodemon. So let's start nice and simple in my package.json. Let's start with just a build script which is just going to do the transpi transpilation uh, from uh, TypeScript to JavaScript. So I'll just do an npx tsc and that's it. So that will just be a one-time building of our JavaScript files based on the TypeScript files. Then I'll run, or I'll add in a start script, which is also going to be simple. It's just going to run, uh, for now, just using node, it will run dist slash index.js. So this is just a way to you know, start the server up, assuming that we have already built or built the application. So I would do something like npm, well, let me make a change first. So we can see that change. Let's go into our index.ts and let's change this to index or plus ts exclamation point exclamation point times four i do an npm run build that will get me my javascript files npm run start refresh the page and we see those changes okay so now let's get a dev server going that will automate that process anytime i change my typescript files i want the javascript to be rebuilt behind the scenes using watch mode on tsc TypeScript's watch mode, and I want Nodemon to uh, be in the picture to automatically restart my server. So I'm gonna install Nodemon, and I guess I should do, I haven't been installing anything as a dev dependency, which I should for a lot of these things. Um, we can move them to dev dependencies afterwards, but I'll just make sure for this one, I make it a dev dependency. Things like TypeScript, that's a dev dependency, right? The, the types for Express and Node, those are also dev dependencies. So I have Nodemon here. I'm gonna to go to my package.json and let's add a dev or dev server or just serve 
whatever you want. I'll just call it dev script. And it's going to first do a TSC dash W. So that's watch mode for TypeScript. And make sure you do one ampersand, not two, because two of them uh, is going to run them sequentially. So this will happen first, and then the second thing will happen. If I do it this way, they'll run in parallel. Well, they'll run in the background at least. TSC dash W and nodemon index slash, or rather dist slash index dot JS. So let's see if this works. This will watch any changes and then also update or restart the server if there are changes. Let's try it, npm run dev. Okay, no errors, that's looking good. And let's make some changes. Let's, uh, let's just add a second route in slash hi that responds with hi. A lot of capital I's. So I saved. Let's see, did it work? Did it automatically update? Can I go to slash hi? Yep. I didn't have to restart the server. I didn't have to rebuild the TypeScript or the JavaScript, at least not manually. It was all taken care of for me. Oh, a bird just hit my window. Well, I'm back and the bird is uh, no longer with us, unfortunately. Um, one minor issue, it's not really an issue, but inconsistency is that here I'm using TSC, assuming it's globally installed. I'm going to add NPX in front of that. It should just make it uh, work for more people. And then another thing to consider, there's two last things I'd like to cover. One is this ampersand is not really, cr it's not cross-platform. It's a Unix thing. It's not going to work on all platforms. So there's a way of, of changing uh, this script to run things concurrently using a couple of packages, but one option is actually called concurrently. And then the other thing I'd like to do is uh, clear out the dist folder every time uh, we rebuild. So right now we're just transpiling all of the code um, and putting it inside of dist, but we might have different files that are no longer used and it would be good to clear those out. So I'm gonna use a package called rimraf, uh, it's like rmrf, rimraf for node. It's very simple, you install it. It's really just uh, npm install rimraf. And then I'm gonna set up a script for my build, instead of just doing npx tsc, first I'm going to do rimraf the dist folder to get rid of it. And then afterwards, two ampersands again is sequentially. So this happens first, and then this will happen. And we could just verify that that works. If I just put something in here like that file, and then I run npm run build. you'll see it's deleted. Our dist folder is essentially recreated with the new transpiled contents. Okay, so that's the first thing, npm run build. Uh, but that's only going to run when I explicitly call this command. So what I think I wanna do is add in a pre-command for start, a pre-script. So if I just have the name pre-start, whatever stuff I put in here, I have an extra space here, by the way, shouldn't matter, uh, will automatically be called, this script will be called before my start script. So I don't have to manually call that. So I'll call npm run build. So whenever we call npm run start, this happens first, meaning the dist folder is cleared out and then we recompile and then we start the server. So that's kind of for production, if you will, versus with dev, maybe I'm gonna call this serve instead of dev. So npm run serve and then I'll have a pre-serve same concept. We could also add in a post script, post serve, post start. I don't have anything to do there, so I'm not going to. But pre-serve, it's going to be the same thing. npm run build. So before this runs, we are going to run this, delete or clear out the dist, recompile, which is kind of unnecessary, I guess, to recompile here and then do it right here, but it's fine. Um, and that should at least be a starting point. So let's do npm run serve, and we should see npm run build happens first, and then our watch mode starts, and at the same time, uh, node mod starts. So the last thing I wanna do is actually change this over so it uses a package called concurrently, because this is not really cross-platform, as I mentioned. This is uh, a Unix-specific command. So I'm going to install that package 
concurrently like that. And this is a package that, again, helps us run uh, different scripts at the same time in parallel concurrently. So what we do is we write concurrently and then we wrap our individual scripts that we want it to run in quotes. But there's one problem. If we use regular quotes, uh, we're, we're like ending the string right here. So I need to escape that quote and that quote right there. Okay, so here's our first command and then we have a space and then the second command follow the same pattern, backslash quote. So here are the two things I wanna do. Concurrently run this and also this. And we shouldn't see anything different. Well, it might look a bit different, the output, but uh, it should still work. If I do npm run serve, it starts by deleting the dist folder, emptying it out, rebuilding, TypeScript has watch mode going, and Nodemon is watching. So if I go to, let's just update our high uh, res.send response, let's do buy, like that. It rebuilds, right? It reserves, and I refresh the page, we see buy. Okay, so that is good enough. I mean, there's more that we could do. We didn't bother with uh, dev versus production. We didn't bother with any sort of environment variables. But this is good enough just to get you up and running uh, with some basics with Express and TypeScript and uh, a little bit of some other packages concurrently is in there. RimRaf is in there. But those are mostly just to uh, sort of enhance our basic setup. All right, I think that's it. So uh, you can find the code in the description, a link to my TypeScript course in the description if you're interested. And uh, I'll be back next week with another video. Uh, I'm gonna do some React stuff coming up. So I don't know, we'll see how this goes. I'm trying to post more often and put myself in the thumbnails and do the whole YouTube game. Uh, we'll see how long it lasts. Okay, see you next week.